NFL teams are out on the field during the anthem um, for every game, as we all definitely know now, if you didn't before. Right. And Cap is sitting on the bench. He'd already done it for a couple of games, I believe. And a reporter eventually asked him, like, are you, like, is there a reason you're kind of, you know, sitting back here? And he was just like, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's officers getting paid leave you know, mm-hmm. after these, uh, these situations where unarmed you know, black people are being, are being killed. And I, I don't want to stand for the flag of a country that oppresses black people and people of color. Mm-hmm. And you know, he straight up said that. And I remember initially seeing that statement because that was the only piece they took out of this 18 minute interview. Of course. They took that of out course. of context. Yeah. Yep. So I see this like, and to me, I'm like, well, the whole country doesn't do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it like initially kind of like just hurt me because I was like, the overseas, like what this flag represents to a lot of people is hope and all these other things. And then I went back and I watched this whole 18 minute interview and he talked about a lot of things. He talked about, first of all, his respect for men and women in the military mm-hmm. and what they do. Mm-hmm. And when I got the further, the full context of what he was talking about, it was essentially what I got from it. Cause I don't want, obviously I'm not, I'm gonna speak for right, him, you. Right, you can't speak What I got for from it was right. like, until things change and improve and we are making, and I feel like there's a concerted effort to fix this issue because it is a real issue, I'm not gonna stand. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm not gonna stand during the anthem because I don't feel that sense of pride mm-hmm. um, the same way that other people do. And I could respect that because I was like, first of all, when I joined the military, we all put our, we all raise our right hand, we take this oath to defend the Constitution, which mm-hmm. includes the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Which is part of he's it. He's exercising, mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. Is he doing it disrespectfully? Some people, that's their interpretation. But after listening to that interview, I was like, I don't think that's his intent is not to not just all. disrespect, right. it's right. to bring awareness to. And to, I mean, a protest is meant to be uncomfortable as Doug Baldwin uh, and mm. so many others in the league have continually said, like, it's not supposed to be, like, people are like, we'll do it at a different time, not during the anthem. Right. Like, that's not gonna have an impact. Right, there you right. go. <laughs> that's the point. So I wrote this open letter through the Army Times because I was getting hit up by CNN and Fox News and MSNBC, and all of them are like, come on our show, and I think they wanted me to debate this mm-hmm. issue, like take a side, you know, mm-hmm. are you right. pro-cap or anti, and I'm like. Yeah, that's not it, that's, that's not, not it. the point. I have my own <laughs> feelings, opinions, and just like everybody should, you right, know, right. and about every issue, like we should have, we should be able to have our own, that's freedom, you know, we should have, have our own opinion and not have to like take a side just because we're told that, you know, you have to be red or blue and you gotta be whatever, left right. or right. So I wrote this letter and I just said, hey, but this is my experience. This is why I feel like I feel. And at first, you know, I, I, I sort of judge you on that, but you know what, like, I respect you because you're doing, you, it takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I look forward to the day, I ended it with like, I look forward to the day that you're once again inspired to stand for the flag. I'll be standing right there next to you. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I signed it, De Oppresso Liber, which means to free the oppressed. That's the special forces motto. Sent it to the Army Times, which no one really reads, like not even in the Army. <laughs> right. No offense to the Army Times. <laughs> but it went out and a lot of sports journalists and athletes and, you know, just influencers, influencers generally started sharing it because they were like, I'm kind of feeling the same way. Like, why can't we just have this conversation? Like, why right. does it have to be immediately take a side? An argument. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, right. This, like, let's, let's figure this out because you meet, you meet, you meet cops, man. Most, most, most people that work in law enforcement are really good people and right. try to do the right thing every day. Right, right. And they hate when this stuff happens, happens because right. it's like it reflects very poorly on right. them. You right, know? Right, and then right. people see that badge and that uniform and they're like, oh, you're one of them. And he's like, no, I'm not. You're right, I'm just you know? me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just me. Like, I, 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 wanna, I wanna protect and I actually wanna protect and serve, which most of them do. And then some of them don't. And also, you know, the, the, the lack of appropriate training and all that's a whole other conversation. But, right. Yep. Um, so what Cap, I think, was trying to do is improve all of that stuff, right? That was the intention behind it. You can have your opinion about whether you think it was the right way or the wrong way, but that's, that's his intent. And that's, mm-hmm. the intent is what's most important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he ended up reading this letter, it got to him. And he, uh, his publicist called me and he's like, hey, they're playing the, the San Diego Chargers tomorrow, at the final preseason game, Cap's starting. Um, he would love to meet with you before the game, if that's possible. I know you're up in Los Angeles, if you can come down. And I was like, oh man, oh man. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> right? I was nervous, but I was also like, appreciative. Yeah, yeah, appreciative. Yeah, appreciative. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful. I'm like, this is a good opportunity 
to Nate, if you're gonna say something and stand for something, you know, speak up, you need to follow through. Right, yeah, this is the, this is the moment. This. Yeah. yeah. So I went down there and I met him and, and Eric Reed. Yep. I played with mm -hmm. them at the time at, in the lobby of the team hotel, like four hours before kickoff. And you could tell all three of us, like very, very much like a locker room conversation, kind of, you know, a little bit jokey at times. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's a very yeah. serious matter, mm -hmm. but it's like, whew, like well, this is, yeah. we're speaking it's heavy, candid, it's, it's heavy, wild. Yeah. Yeah. right, yeah, it's heavy, but tell. it's conversation. Yeah, and Cap was like, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna blow up like this, like this quick, this is, this is wild, but like, this is why I feel this way. And he kind of laid more stuff out, you know, mm -hmm. and I completely understood and I respected not only his willingness to say that, and he was very, I will say too, he was very respectful of, of, of me and the, you know, in the, in the uh, you know, my time in the military and all that, and I appreciated that, but, um, but you know, there's no cameras around. It wasn't a, it wasn't a moment right. like that where I was, I was a little nervous, like, is this, is this a, uh, yeah. A media opportunity. Yeah, like right. a dog and right. pony yeah. show. This is just, yeah. 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 Just, just honest. And so we had this whole conversation, and he asked me at the end of it, he's like, all right, do you think there's a way that I can get my point across that's yeah. not going to offend people in the military? And I was like, I, I don't speak for the military, first right, of all. Right, right, right. Like, no matter what you do, some people somebody's going to be somebody, offended, right. no matter what. Exactly. I was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, and I even said, Honestly, if you stand now without yeah. and just they just, still there's gonna be those people that <laughs> yeah. are like, wait a minute, you said you were, you were you were all about this thing and now you're yeah. standing you giving in. I'm like that, so they're gonna have those people that are gonna be yep. they, no matter what you do, you can't. It's, it's not gonna be. A, there's no win here as far as like everybody can't please everybody. No. Absolutely not gonna be able to anyway. Exactly. So I said, look, to me, if you're asking my opinion, which he was, you know, I was like, I, I would love to see you be alongside your teammates because mm -hmm. either way. You guys all, all agree in that locker room, you know, as much as anybody. Yep. That locker room is very diverse. Very. Different opinions. You, know, you don't right. even like half the guys you play with, but you still, you take a hit for them. You yep. know what I mean? you got to line up shoulder to shoulder and like, right. yep. get this thing done together. Same in the military. Yep. You know, there's people I would take a bullet for that I can't stand mm. <laughs> I have a conversation with you. Part of the team. But I yeah. know you would do it for me. Right. And so, like, let's go. Mm. And he agreed that that was, that was important, right? So it was like, all right, we're going to be... We're going to be, uh, I should be alongside my team. Shoulder to shoulder. So just from the optics standpoint, yeah, yeah. you wanted to figure out, okay, yeah. at least if you're not standing, at least be with your teammates. But how could he yeah. do that logistically with that? <laughs> right, trying yeah, yeah. to, you know, find a win-win right. situation for everyone. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, there is, there, I don't know if there was a, a def definitive win there, but I said, look, if, 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 if if you're willing to do that, and he's like, he's like, but I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to stand. I'm not gonna stand until things change. I said, I think the only thing that makes sense, the only other option really is taking a knee. Mm -hmm. and I think that's respectful. People take a knee to pray and propose, and yeah. uh, when a player's hurt on the field, the guy's taking a knee out of respect. Like it's a very common thing. People see that as a respectful gesture, mm -hmm. and he agreed. Uh, I thought it was thought it was better, mm. and so he did it that night, um, and you know, I ended up standing next to him. Uh, during the anthem, and it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was powerful. I mean, it was, it was also, it was also disheartening because you could hear the people booing. There was response. Right, right. I was like standing there, like, yeah. wow. Like, wow. Still, it didn't matter. It like, doesn't matter. And no one cared. Yeah. Um, and even with that context and conversation, I think a lot of people did adjust their their feelings on kind of on both both, both sides. sides yeah. Honestly, a lot of people were like. Okay, like I, you know, I, I understand. I also do understand that um, we that we do need law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We just need to figure out how to do this better. Like how right, to fix right. this, you know. And uh, anyway, it was. I thought it was a very powerful moment. That's awesome, and, man. Um, I was proud to stand. You know, proud to stand next to him. I don't think I would change. I get asked a lot. Would you do it different? No. I don't think I would. I don't think I would change anything. Yeah, it's a good um, moment. But it's <laughs> it's still a topic of debate. Right.